What's going on guys? I am Simple Simon. I'm your comic book noob. Welcome to the noob universe. Whole new universe. Uh, we don't have much time today because I forgot to bring my memory card. <laughs> so I'm running on an emergency oh, memory surprise, card. Surprise, surprise. Sorry, I'm I was just getting stuff out of my diary. I wasn't doing anything rude. Unprepared. <laughs> Today's topic is the state of DC and Marvel. Let's do this. Quick shout out to my Sominions, your support is greatly appreciated. If you're interested in exclusive members only videos, extended episodes of The Noob, and exclusive emojis, hit the join button to find out more about channel membership, but remember, your membership is not required. The best way to support the channel is by liking and commenting on videos. Perks. You can say hi Mark now without all the interruptions. Oh, sorry. Hi Mark. Hello. Hello. F Hello Mark. Hi Mark. Hi Simon. Hi everyone out there in internet land. All right, running out of space. The reason I wanted to bring this topic up today, Mark. What topic again? Uh, topic the state, again? the current state the of current DC state. and Marvel. Not just comic books, but also the movies and everything like that. Because I guess the reason I'm bringing up this topic is because go back to when I first started, for example, in, in comic books, which is what, six years ago, maybe a bit more. I don't know, not that long ago. You know, MCU was obviously thriving. Yeah. And yep. the world of, you know, comic book, were obviously a huge part of pop culture because of the MCU, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if comic books are well or not, but uh, obviously the MCU has really died in the ass in the past couple of years. DC, you know, they've, they've never been huge, but I think because of the MCU, it made people go see the DCU films yeah, as well. Correct. The thing I want to talk about is obviously you see, you working in a comic shop, you see the sales of DC and Marvel books and obviously for me you know I've dropped off massively on superheroes, it's just not really my thing anymore. Not that I don't like it, I just, it's been a long time since I've read anything good from DC. I don't really read much Marvel, but uh, you know I appreciate more the indie stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, what's what do you think the state of you know superheroes and Marvel and DC is at the moment in the comic book world and the movie world? Well, You're obviously representing Marvel with your <laughs> jumper today. Oh uh, no, well, I'm not representing anything. <laughs> really, big city comics is what I'm representing. That's right. And the noob universe. Is that the right? Details. That's right. That's noob right. Universe. Yeah. That's if you right. want to uh, check out Mark, all these details are below. Details, details, everybody likes a detail. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. You're running out of time. Okay. So, this is, this is how you got to look at it. This is how I look at it anyway. The state of comics has not been good for a long time. Statistics show, I'm going to go to statistics. Everyone can see, it's not only on a piece of paper um, with numbers, but everyone can see that the, the comic books cannot sustain themselves by themselves without a thriving movie industry or cross, say cross media help. When the CW was, you know, having Arrow and The Flash, and then you had um, the DC movies coming out, and you had the Marvel movies coming out, as well as the movie TV shows before Disney Plus, that stuff was thriving, you know? And people want to know more. They want to know history. They want to know what the original, what, what it's based off, you know, the source material. Whereas now I feel, that even though they bring out movies, still, there's no source material. So people don't come to the comic books to get the source material. And that's what I mean by they don't have, comic books are not strong enough in storytelling. Modern comic books are not strong enough to sustain them on their own. They need other things. They need something to prop them up. Uh, unfortunately, it should be the other way around. We all, we all agree, it should be the other way. The comic books should prop the the, the, uh, the comic book movies up, but it's not like that anymore, and, and, and it'll never be like that. And and that's why um, they're constantly not rebooting, but refreshing themselves, Sw changing around art writers, changing around artists to different books, swapping them around. You know, putting this writer on that, putting that writer. Like DC, DC are going through uh, that at the moment, right? With DC all in. Yeah. So um, that's the other so side. So that's the thing. Um, they're, they're constantly changing and it's just, I think, I mean, do you think that hurts the comic book industry? Because, for, again, for newbies, for I don't newbies, think so because the numbering is the same. I think it's confusing. It's not confusing it, at all. It's not, it's, it's it, not it's confusing. Not, no, I don't think so. You don't think comic books are confusing? For someone who doesn't know anything about... No, because most people who, that I have, my customers that I have, they tend to love the jumping on point. I'll talk from experience. They love yeah, jumping on point. Yeah, okay, yeah, I get that. They love that... Um, 
Yeah, so that new refresh, that new look, that new take. That's a good point, actually. You know, because so I always ask about <clears throat> good, because obviously I haven't read a lot, even though I've been collecting for a while now, uh, especially Marvel. I've got my comics sorted by, you know, red and then unread, and obviously the unread section's huge. Yes. But the red section, I've got maybe eight boxes of DC, yep. and I've got one box of Marvel compared to that. Well, so, you're a DC guy, it's okay. So I always ask with certain characters, like there's always characters that I really want to get into or just want to know about. I always like to know what are the classic stories to read or where's a good jumping on point for those uh, characters. So. Hmm. And yeah, you to use you as an example, when someone says to you, have you read how many times, how, how long did it take me to bug you about the Red Hood or, or you, Batman Year One? Because it's old for you. For you, you say, oh, no, nah, it's too old. No, I'd never say that. It's just that yeah. for me, the way I did it, and a lot of people, I think, do it by coming into the hobby and saying, where should I start? And people like you will always say, start with the classics, right? I didn't do that. I didn't have Mark in the beginning. I just found an issue one. I was like, whoa, Catwoman issue one. This is going to be see? good. Yeah, <laughs> see that. So, good right. example. Batman good, issue 50. Good, yeah. Oh, they're getting married. That seems like a good jumping on point. That's where I jumped in. Yeah. And I just stayed with the modern stuff. And obviously, every now and then when I had time, I would go back and read a classic like Hush yeah. and Under the Red Hood and stuff. So, with the DC stuff, like with All In, they're not they're not all they're not all changing. The uh, Chip Sarsky is not, he's not moving off Batman. He's staying on Batman. And the numbering is staying the same. Actually, can you just quickly, just in quick, short detail of what is all in, what, what is it all it's about? Just a re, just it's just a reboot? It's just not a reboot. A refresh. It's not a reboot. They did it a couple of years ago. Um, with DC Universe? With oh, DC. No, no, with Dawn of DC. Dawn of DC, that's, that's right. right. They just swapped around all their artists, art writers and, and illustrators, right? So they, this is just another one of those. I mean, it's not a bad thing. You've got to look at it, you know, um, obviously the sales on Batman are good, so they, they leave chip sales because it's all about the money. It's not about storytelling anymore, so. And what's the whole deal with right now? You've, they've got the Absolute thing as well? Yeah, so then. Uh, so that's two so that's different. Yeah, so that's coming out of obviously Absolute Power. Um, they're starting like an Absolute uh, Universe. So that's two separate universes yeah. under the one umbrella, two yeah. different things yeah, going so, at one time. So Zach's. Zach, sorry. Scott Snyder is coming back to DC um, to overlook the overall absolute universe but there are different writers doing superman absolute superman absolute wonder woman but he is doing he's doing absolute batman on the marvel side of things they were doing the same thing right yeah well um, marvel have well marvel went back to that well with their uh, ultimate line brian michael bender started that universe and he started it off with the, obviously spider-man and then from the ultimate universe came out of that's where miles morales came out of and they started a whole universe with the Avengers and X-Men, Ultimate, you know? That was a really good jumping on point. It was called, I think it was Ultimate Universe, I think it was called. It was really good to restart that universe. Whereas, whereas DC are starting a whole new universe, absolute. I, I think it's personally, yeah, it sounds good and it's, yeah, it's a good jumping on point and it's uh, the beginning of a universe. Whereas, you know, they could have used one of the current other universes that, that, that they've got in their, I suppose, gun case. You know, like yeah, the Earth One universe, which was great, and 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 that was already that's already been there. You know, they did, they've done a Batman, they've done a Superman, they've done Wonder Woman, Earth One. You know, but they're all trades. They're not books. They're not comics. They're all graphic novels. But I think it was it would have been a good starting off point to gain sales from those books again. You know, gain interest again to those books. To, go back to that well of the Earth One universe and then people people want to know where they came from, they can you know they, they generate sales for the yeah, so for for the graphic novels. So it, it, it boggles the mind boggles of their decisions why they do these things but And you don't think that's confusing to someone who's coming into the hobby? Of course it's confusing. <laughs> and that's what's like but what's not confusing is that they're starting a new people see he new. Okay. New. Yeah. Back to yeah when you first started Big City Comics, obviously the MCU was still kind of in their thriving stage. Did you, obviously Marvel was selling well, I'm assuming, when you first opened the shop? Yes and no. Uh, more, more the trades. Okay. You know, because the movies were big, so people wanted to read Infinity Gauntlet. They wanted to read, you know, Winter Soldier, yeah. stuff like that. Whereas the comic book industry, again, when it was thriving, it, yeah, it was good, but it wasn't as good as, <clears throat> it, it, it's not, it can no longer sustain itself. But whereas in the 90s, 80s and 90s, it was prompting up itself with great storytelling, great characters, deep char deep characterization of, of characters that we love, where that's no longer, now it's fickle, you know, you get, uh, the X-Men just started off all the with their number ones again, 
you know, you invest into a comic book, gets to 25 issues, then they start from number one again with, all, with a whole different team. So it's hard to invest in anything like that anymore because, yeah, it's no, no depth. I think they've gone where they can go with, with X-Men and I think they're going to struggle going forward. <clears throat> Do you think adding X-Men into the MCU would uh, boost X-Men again? No, I'm talking about comics. I'm not talking okay. about yeah, the movies. Yeah. So Hello. the MCU has really lost it for me. They, they have no clue what they're doing. Um, what about DC? That's all I care about. What about DC? Because obviously the DC that has been around for a long time, I'm talking about the Affleck's and the Henry Havels, like that's just done, right? Yeah. It was never good in my mind. Like, obviously, when I first got into comic books, I really enjoyed watching those movies. But at the end of the movie, I was like, that was not a good but, movie. But the problem with the DC, the, the problem with the, the good thing about Marvel is that they used the source material and then adapted it for the screen. Because I've said this before, you can't adapt from page to celluloid, right? You have to adapt it, you know? Dialogue, characters, you know? With the DC movies, they just don't care about the source material. They just do their own story. There's his character, that's his origin. Let's let's just write our own story. Don't worry about what's come before. Part of you, you think, oh, maybe because they don't want to pay royalties to the, that to that writer. But I, th I don't think they understand if, that if they do use the source material and they do pay royalties to the writer who wrote that story, and if that story's good, they'll probably make, make their money back. You know, a good example is, um, you know, uh, Robert Patterson's Batman, right? The Batman, which is yeah. a great movie, and I and I absolutely loved it. It was probably it was the first Batman movie where you see where he's using detective skills. Yeah, they weren't the best detective skills, and you know, it's only his second year, but you know, you got room to move. You know, he's got room to grow. The character's got room to grow. I love movies, any movie that has character development on the run. I, I, I love that stuff because you, you're not sacrificing either one. You're not sacrificing the character development or you're not sacrificing storytelling. You're doing it on the run, right? And I, love, and I love that and that's what they did with him. But the thing is with that movie is that it wasn't straight out of the source material. They used bits and pieces. You know, a bit of the long Halloween, a, a bit of this and a bit of that. So they, they never straight adapt, not like say Winter Soldier good example you know that even though that would that you know that was a straight adaption yeah it wasn't exactly like the book but it was a straight adaption and it, 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 it was it was a wow you know moment uh, watching an Avengers film you know even though that wasn't straight out of the book you know the first meeting but it was like the first Avengers book but wow it was close <laughs> It, it, it's just um, comic books are um, they, they're trying they're, they're trying now they realize that there's no movies to, to live off anymore the the success of the movies you know filters into or overflows into the comic book industry uh, um, into that medium they, there's no longer that there's no longer what do you think both DC and Marvel should do or need to do to be, I guess, reach greatness again. You so know? you're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Wow. Well, we but, but, but really? Because I would be able well, to give you Eli, an answer. Well, Eli always bags me because, you know, I, I'm a, a, comic book, a comic book guy who has a store, who has an opinion. You know, just like the guy from The Simpsons. Yeah, and that's why if it was me, this is what I would do. If it was me, that what I would do. You have this cliche comic book store guy, right? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> so I might as well go down that so road. So tell me. All right, what would I do? I would focus on, I would focus on story, not character. I would, I would look at, I would look at what makes um, the indie industry more popular than the DC Marvel. I would look at. So you think saying the indie sales are bigger than DC? Absolutely. Wow. And I would look at what manga is doing mm. because that's that's absolutely destroying everyone. I would look at what they're doing. Why why is manga so popular? And I'll tell you what it is. It's values, mate. The values, the family values. Now, you know, instead of um, putting, um, you know, politics, current political uh, agendas in stories and stuff like that. Just look at the characters, story, but character-based stories. That's how I would go back to, um, go back to square one. Not another reboot, no. Not another reboot. They need to have a look, hard, hard look at themselves. Hashtag Mark for President. <laughs> That's all we got for you today. Now, Mark and I have been discussing obviously doing the podcast uh, style videos where we're going to do it live uh, and obviously a more podcast lengthy. Podcast style videos? Yeah, well, podcast streams, I guess. Streaming, okay. Yeah, so. Live, uh, live you want to do a live stream? We'll do it live. Want, so, uh, oh my God, we're going to do it live. It's not necessarily going to be on a schedule, but we're hopefully going to try to nut one out uh, hopefully soon. Um, soon. 
Yep. We, we are we are pl on the, in planning. And I believe Th these things take planning because it's life. This is always off the cuff, and Mark has no idea what the topic is until no. I get here. No, um, that, that is true. Obviously, the podcast style streams that we do yeah. will be more planned, sometimes, more prepared, yeah. guy. Sometimes when he just gives me a, a subject that I have no about, I just, I just feel like banging my head again. Up I, said, the I, wall, mate, like, I know how to drive you, mate. So, I, like I said to him today, I was like, you let me worry about the one percenters and the handballs, and you just kick them goals, mate. And did he not? Kick goals today. He kicked a bag. Anyway, yeah. we're running out of space. All right. <laughs> uh, if you guys are still watching this video, I appreciate you. Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on all the stuff that he said today. Make sure you leave a hashtag high mark in the comments. And like I said, look forward to um, future episodes of this and the podcast, which I believe I'm going to call the Noob Absolute. Oh. Are you going to allow people to comment? Well, we, well yeah. you do, yeah? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So I uh, look forward to that. Uh, I'm excited to do that because Mark and I haven't really done a lot of live now, streams together. Yep, yeah, and also like you got to give me a sub. You got to give me subjects that you know I'm going to rant about. I know, I know yeah, you will. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, it'll be, it'll be more. Get structured. ready for some. Get ready for some ranting. It'll be more structured than this. So anyway, <laughs> uh, we we happened. We made it to the end without the memory card running out. So uh, again, uh, we appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, consider being a channel member to see more extended versions of this guy crapping on uh, <laughs> and until next time say bye mark bye mark and keep it simple i appreciate you son oh, i love you mark oh. members only <laughs> <laughs> outtakes for the members become a member all right that's right come on say it oh, become a seminion seminion that's the word seminion <laughs>